guys, it's Matthew. Uh, you'll have to excuse me today. I've got a bit of a cold, so it won't be a regular scheduled broadcast here, but I do want to go over a few things. Uh, one being just the plants in the flood table, the Super Thrive experiment, the DWC system, and there's even a slight problem I'm having with uh, the solar setup. I've, I've just been putting the panels kind of back together a little bit and trying to charge one of the batteries here and I'm having a problem so I'm hoping there's somebody out there that can help me with that. The plants here inside the flood table uh, they're actually doing really well and I'm really impressed with how dense the canopy is that everything still stays pretty pretty green looking. Uh, there's a tomato in there, cherry tomato that's ripened um, as well as the jalapeno peppers are starting to get around to a size where they can be picked at least a few of them anyways. Uh, however, I have noticed a little bit of purpling on some of the leaves in there and it's a little strange. I tried to look it up online and it seems like a deficiency of some kind, but um, I don't think it's anything too big to worry about here. So I probably won't do anything about it uh, for the time being unless it kind of looks like it's taking over the plants. We'll go look at the seed germination with the Super Thrive and check out some of the results there. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys are curious as to what's going on with that, so let's go take a look. All right, so here we have the seed germination experiment, and here we have uh, round one and round two. And although we do have uh, some seeds germinating here with the first round we did, there's no like you can't tell any difference between what was started with Super Thrive and what wasn't and what was uh, one drop and what was two drops. Um, not everything germinated but this probably wasn't the best experiment to do. I, uh, they weren't keeping that moist and uh, some of the cubes I think dried out and therefore didn't germinate well and then when I did uh, soak them again I think it was just a little too late so um, if we take a look though We'll see that what what is looking the best is actually the one that was just plain water. Um, then we have one that sprouted with one drop of the Super Thrive. Uh, we have one sprouted with a two drop. And there was another that sprouted that died and that one was also a two. There, there's just nothing that here that's telling me that Super Thrive is going to make your seeds germinate quicker than just using water anyway so um, but that's it for that one so let's take a look at what's been going on with the second round which was uh, I did take a lot better care of this one than I did the first one like these things are really tall and scraggly and that's just because they've been covered the whole time so they're really looking to try to find some light uh, I did notice that is actually the one again with zero drops of Super Thrive that germinated first uh, then I think there was one with the three and then the two but you can see now that actually the the three has three sprouts that have come up uh, the two has two that have come up uh, and one is on its way to there and the one with zero has two up and one is you know just making its way out two so um, again there's nothing here telling me that super thrive is going to germinate anything quicker than just using your plain water. So, uh, would I use Super Thrive again to germinate seeds? No, definitely not. From what I can tell, there's just no uh, advantage to using it. Um, yeah, sure, the one that had the three drops in there, all three germinated, but um, you know that could have just been the luck of the draw, I guess, with as far as seeds go. So. Uh, and like I said, these all these have actually germinated. It's just you're not seeing. Some are a little bit ahead of the others. So that's pretty much it as far as the seedlings with the Super Thrive goes. I'll probably scrap all these first round guys and throw them in the garbage. Uh, I might continue to grow these ones. Um, still using the same uh, Super Thrive feeding um, regime I've been using before. Uh, what... I would like to do or what my original plan was that I would grow these up and uh, around springtime move them outside in a DWC system where the only different variable 
uh, would be the Super Thrive as far as uh, nutrients goes and see how that goes. But I think what I'd rather do now is uh, take uh, clones of one plant. That way they all have the same genetics and do it that way. And I think that would be a little bit uh, better than just growing these up um, because they are different plants, so who knows. Um, but yeah, that's about it. If you guys were expecting different results, um, I don't know, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Okay, moving right along to the DWC and the aphids. Um, as far as the powder goes, <laughs> I would not recommend it. It was just a big mess to clean up and uh, it might have been effective, but uh, would not recommend powder for an indoor hydroponic system. I switched over to uh, the insecticide, the uh, soap-based insecticide, and it worked really well. Uh, I could notice within a few days that the aphids were drying up. They were turning like a brown and black color and dying. So I've just been keeping an eye on it and giving it a little bit of spray here and there to uh, clean them up. Uh, also gave the plants a bit of a pruning and uh, they're doing all right. Uh, there is an issue uh, with the roots in here. They're still looking pretty gross. Uh, brown and they almost look like it could be some kind of root rot too which wouldn't surprise me at all. It's a little air pump that's trying to um, <clears throat> deliver enough air for all three of these buckets. So I mean that could be very well be uh, the problem there. What I'm going to try just because I can and these plants are kind of guinea pigs for um, <laughs> whatever I throw at them. I'm going to try some hydrogen peroxide. Now I know this is only 3% and you should be using like the food grade 35% for this but I'll be putting a little bit inside the buckets here to see if that helps clean up the roots any. Um, but we'll see. I mean this bottle was $1.50 from the dollar store so we'll give that a shot and uh, next time in, I'm in the city the hydroponics store maybe I'll pick up some 35% and I will cover kind of the application of this stuff probably in another video coming up and lastly uh, the solar panels I was talking about uh, what I have is just the panels hanging in the window right now and they're run down and charging the battery but I can't get the battery to fully charge it seems like I can get it to maybe just about 12 volts during the day and then at night it will actually drop down um, to probably uh, under 11 volts and I'm just kind of baffled as to why it's doing that because it shouldn't really be losing a charge throughout the night. Um, the diodes in the solar panel and the charge controller, I mean the current shouldn't be going out from the battery, it should only be able to come in. So just a little bit uh, yeah, like I said, uh, confused as to why that's going on. The battery was new last year. I don't know if it needs to be topped up. I'm not too sure on how batteries, uh, how it works for that, how the cells work, or if you can top up the cells, or if that's what needs to be done even. I don't know. So I'm hoping somebody out there can tell me about that. I'm actually planning on doubling the solar panels for this year and even doubling or tripling the battery bank for for the garden outside just to see what I can really do with this thing so I'm a little excited to get started on this but as for updates that's all I'm going to be doing for today so uh, again might make another video here coming up so we'll see what happens there but thanks for watching and I will see you guys on the next episode bye